Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about sub data sheets in Microsoft Access, what they are, how to use them, and why I don't let my end users play with them. Now, this is an expert level tutorial. What does that mean? Well, it's between beginner and developer. Expert classes, in my opinion, are ones where I focus on relationships between tables and other advanced stuff. Okay, so you should have a firm grasp on relationships between tables before watching this video. If not, go watch my relationships video. I'll put a link down below. You can click on it and then come on back. Okay, so recently I made a change to my tech help free template. And now if you open up the customer table, you see all these little pluses over here in that left column. What does that mean? Well, these are what are called sub data sheet indicators or expanders. And if you click on one of those, it will show you related records in a second table. For example, here we have relationship between customers and orders and James Kirk has an order there. And you'll see it. If I click on the one next to me, you'll see I have two orders and each of those are related to order details. See that? And you can keep going. Now, how did this happen? This didn't used to be there. Well, a few versions of the template ago, and I covered this in one of the videos, I set up a global relationship using something called referential integrity. It's up under database tools and then relationships. And here's a relationship I set up with customer T to order T and from order T to order detail T. You can learn all about that in my referential integrity video. Essentially, it prevents you from having an order that doesn't have a customer, for example, or a line item detail that doesn't have an order. Okay. Now, once you do this, once you set up referential integrity, once you create a global relationship between two tables, then you'll start to see these sub data sheet indicators over here. All right. You can click on it to expand it. Now, I personally do not let my end users work with my tables directly. It's dangerous. It gives them too much power. Okay. Even, even a sub data sheet or a data sheet view of a form can be dangerous. Okay. I don't like giving this to my end users. All right, you have very little control over what you can keep them from doing if they have direct access to tables. So you're going to make them work with forms. Okay. Now, if you want to replicate this kind of behavior with forms, you can create subforms. Okay. Got a video on subforms, and your subforms can have continuous forms inside them. Okay. That's a continuous form. You can have a subform inside a continuous form, which access tries to prevent you from doing, but you can do it right. And here you go. Here's your main form. And you got a subform down here. You can even have nested subforms with continuous forms in them. Again, there's a trick for that. I got videos for all this stuff. And one thing that's not easy to do is you can quickly and easily change the source object of the subform. All right, I'm going to show you how to do that with a sub data sheet in a second, but you got to go into design view properties and all that. Here you can actually give your user a way to click on a little tab or a button or a link or whatever and switch what's in there. All right, but you can't do that with a sub data sheet. So sub data sheets are not for your end users. There's plenty of ways you can give your end users means to get around in your database and do cool stuff like this. This is a developer tool. This is for you, the designer of the database the person who understands what all of this stuff is, because this can get complicated looking, and the person that also realizes that you can very easily delete stuff. Okay, all right, here, now, see, I got referential integrity set up, so I can't delete that order because there's order details. All right, but your users can easily come in here and do something like that, and there's no control over that. At least in your form, you can give them control over what they can and can't delete. So end users, no bueno going in the tables. Don't let them in your tables or your queries directly for that matter. They get forms and reports and that's it. Okay. Now a couple of notes. What happens if you have multiple relationships between those tables? So if you go to database tools and you go to relationships and let's say I add the contact table into here. Okay. The contact table is also listed or linked to the customer ID in the customer table. All right. We'll set up referential integrity. Hit create. Okay, there we go. Now, customers related to both of these. And I just hit that by accident. Okay, so save that. And then we're going to come back out to our customer table, open it up. Now I'm going to open up the sub data sheet indicator again. And immediately it asks me, because now it sees there's multiple relationships. It's like, which one do you want? All right, so do you want order like we had before? Or we can go to contact T. 
and it guesses what the, the linked fields are down here, just like a subform will do. All right, you can also pick queries and stuff. All right, hit OK, and there you go. Now we're linked to the contact. All right, that's actually saved in the table design. If you want to change it, there's no easy way to come in here. You can't like right click. You can, you can right click once this is expanded, right? You can right click on this little guy. Well, where'd it go? Hang on. Come here. Right click. There it is. Data sheet. And there's some options in here. You can change how it looks, you know, raised, flat, sunken, the colors, right? The, these are options here. There's the data sheet border option. And then there's the column header underline option. I never, honestly, I never play with this stuff. I never use this. So I'm just showing it to you. If you want to play with it, go out and play with it. I don't bother with this stuff. I use forms. Okay. But if you want to change this back to orders, you have to go to design view. Okay. Go to the, the properties for the table, right click on the title bar here. All right. Go to properties. And then here you'll see sub data sheet name. It's the contact T table. You can switch this back to order T. All right, and it guesses what the linked fields are again. You can change those if you want to. If you got a if you got a table with a different name like customer, you know, employee, whatever. Okay, there's op options up here too. Sub data sheet expanded and height. You can control that. Okay, close it. Now, when you open up the customer T, you can go back in here and you can see we're back to order and order detail. All right, but that's what your sub data sheet is. Use them if you want to for yourself, you the developer. Don't let your end users in your tables directly. Give them forms and subforms to play with. I got lots of videos to teach you how to do that. I don't even talk about sub data sheets until access expert level two. That's after my nine beginner classes and expert one. Expert one, I cover basic relationships and how that all works. And then in expert level two, we talk about table sub data sheets and stuff. But again, I don't use them that often. I really don't. I, I prefer to work with forms. Tables are okay once in a while if you got to poke around in there and figure out something that happened or where's this or, you know, why, where'd those deleted records go? <laughs> that kind of weird stuff. But uh, no, I, I, no, I don't use them. And of course, shameless plug, if you want to learn lots more about this kind of stuff, I have a relationship seminar where I cover everything you could possibly want to know about different kinds of relationships. We cover it all. No relationships, one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-many, self-joins, reverse relationships, all kinds of different examples. You name it, this is a, one of my most popular seminars. So if you want to learn about relationships and all there is to know about them, get this. So that's it, sub data sheets. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming. 
As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.